Hello, my name is Bob Johnson with Microfocus Global Customer Care, and in this video we're going to talk about creating custom printer maps using the iPrint Map Designer tool. The iPrint Map Designer tool has been around since the introduction of iPrint, and so you'll find the same tool even going far back as Netware. For the purposes of this discussion, I'll be running the map tool from an iPrint appliance 2.1, but the concepts that we discuss and the steps should apply to any iPrint environment. We'll have a brief discussion about the default iPrint printer installation page. We will discuss the requirements for running the iPrint Map Designer tool. We'll also demonstrate the iPrint Map Designer tool and review the file locations for images on the iPrint server. We'll also demonstrate a method for copying image files, and we'll demonstrate an option for creating a custom map for a campus with multiple floors. The default iPrint printer installation page is accessed by specifying the IP or DNS of the iPrint server, followed by forward slash IPP, as in this example iPrint21.johnsonlab.com forward slash IPP. The default iPrint printer installation page looks like this. The default iPrint printer installation page does a very good job of presenting the printers to your end users. It's a very basic and simple way to allow users access to the iPrint printers. In some cases, depending on your environment, it may make more sense to create a custom printer map, which is what we'll demonstrate later in this video. The iPrint Map Designer tool supports Windows 10, 8.1, 8, 7, and Vista operating systems. It's also required to run Microsoft Internet Explorer 6.0 or later, and you must run that as administrator. The Microfocus iPrint client must be installed on the workstation where you're running the iPrint map designer tool. Background images are copied to the folder as seen in this slide. We'll demonstrate that later in this video. And custom printer images are copied to this particular folder, which we will also demonstrate. These images would be custom maps or printer images that you provided if you were not going to use the default set of images that ships with the iPrint product. For the remainder of the video, we'll go ahead and demonstrate the iPrint Map Designer tool. We'll talk a little bit about the defaults. We'll go over file locations. We'll go over the process of copying custom maps to your iPrint server. The end result will be a multi-page custom map based on our imaginary four-floor campus. To begin with, we launch Internet Explorer as administrator. Once you've launched Internet Explorer as administrator, the URL to the iPrint Map Designer tool is https colon slash slash the DNS name or IP address of your iPrint server followed by forward slash map tool dot htm. You're now in the map designer. If you'll recall, the default IPP page displays to my end users a list of all the printers I've configured for this particular iPrint server. In our imaginary scenario, we're going to pretend that my end users have requested a more graphical interface for installing their iPrint printers. If we jump back to the map tool, the map designer ships with a series of images for copiers, dot matrix printers, inkjet, laser. I found that most of these images are sufficient for the purposes of the designer. It also ships with two sample office images. This particular office image 
and this office image. And of course, you're going to want something custom for your particular environment. The way the designer works is when you launch it, it's actually pulling these image files from a directory under var, opt, novel, iprint, htdocs, images, and for the office images, those are located under this maps folder. The printer images are located under this printers folder. So assuming I can't or don't want to use the default office image, what I can do is using a utility like WinSCP, which is what I prefer to use, I connect to the iPrint server with WinSCP logging in as root, browse to the appropriate file location. In this case, it's the maps directory. I then can copy my office images from my local drive over to the maps directory. I could do the same thing for printers. If I had uh, printer images that I wanted to copy over, in this case, as mentioned, the default images are going to work fine for our purposes. Once I do that, I can then go back into the map tool. I refresh this page so that it'll reread the images in the directory and drop down the list. And now I have the additional maps that I've copied into the map directory. And for this example, we'll start with floor one. And with that map displaying, we can now start using the designer tool. The way the designer tool works is you simply select an image that you want. It can be any one that's in this list. For our purposes, we're going to go ahead and use copier. Notice that for the most part, the images are the same. It's just a matter of size. So for example, depending on your map, you would just choose the size that's most appropriate for your environment. In this case, we'll go ahead and use this particular size. We grab the icon and we drag and drop it wherever we would like. And just for our purposes, we'll go ahead and put it right here. Now with that icon selected, we can then drop down the list of printer agents. And this list is built from the printer agents we have installed on our iPrint server. And we're going to assign Office 1. And then we can assign mouse over text. This is up to you. For this example, I'll just say HP color. That'll be the mouse over text that shows up and it's kind of dynamic. So there's an example of what it'll look like. And then a printer caption, you could put whatever you wanted. We'll just say accounting for this example. And that's how it'll show up. And let's say we wanted to add another printer to this map and we will use the same image. We'll place this one over here. And this is Office 2, we will assume. Mouse over text, we'll call this Xerox Multifunction 5225. I'm just making stuff up at this point. And the printer caption, we'll call this Legal. And let's assume we're finished with this map. And at this point, we can just go ahead and click on File save as we're going to save it into a directory I call my maps and we're going to call it floor1.htm and at this point the map is saved. The next step will be to copy floor1.htm to the iPrint server so that our end users can actually have access to it. And again we'll use the WinSCP utility to do that. The actual maps themselves 
go into the ht docs directory. So if we take floor one htm and just drag and drop it, copy with floor one.htm copied to our server, we should be able to go back to our browser and go to iPrint. 21 johnsonlab.com forward slash this time we specify ipp docs slash floor one dot htm and here is our custom map and if our users wanted to install this printer they simply click on the icon of the printer they want to install and click it and they'll get the prompt to install it. We won't go through that particular example right now. So that demonstrates how to at least do a single page custom map. But what if we're in a situation where we have multiple floors like I do in my imaginary company? The designer doesn't allow us to link multiple pages together. This is where some HTML knowledge is helpful. So what I'll do next is using the steps we just demonstrated, I'm going to create three additional custom maps that will represent floors two, three, and four in my imaginary environment. Because we just demonstrated how to create a custom map, I won't step through the process when creating maps two, three, and four, I'll be using the exact same steps we just demonstrated. I will then demonstrate the process of linking those maps together using some very basic HTML uh, coding. I am no HTML wizard, and there are certainly a lot of different ways to do this. But for a basic map that lets you navigate between individual custom maps. This will give you an idea of what is required to make this happen. So now that I've created my additional maps, the next step is to get those maps copied to the iPrint server. I've already copied the map files to my iPrint server, but just to review, Using a utility like WinSCP, you copy the map files from your local drive to the htdocs directory on your iPrint server. If you're using an iPrint appliance, that directory will be VA Storage iPrint VAR OP Novell iPrint htdocs. If you're on an OES server, the directory will be VAR OP Novell iPrint htdocs. And once those files are copied over, the end user can now access those by going to the DNS or IP address of the iPrint server forward slash IPP docs forward slash and then the map file name, which we'll demonstrate now. So, for example, going to the floor one map, I just specify this URL, and as you can see, it brings up the floor one map. And if I wanted to go to the floor, to map, I would do the same thing, and so on. Um, this is one way that users could access the, the different maps within your environment. Ideally, though, you'd want maybe like a main map that had links to each of these maps so that the end user could more easily navigate to each of the uh, custom maps that you've created, and we'll demonstrate how to do that now. Let's assume that we have a main campus JPEG that we want to use as the main map that our users go to. And ultimately, we want to have links to the custom maps we've created to allow our users to install the iPrint printers. If you recall, in order to get this map to show up in the map tool, we use a utility like WinSCP and we copy the main.jpg file from our local drive to the htdocs images maps directory. And I've already done this. And by doing this, it allows this map to show up in the map tool. So now if we go into the map tool and we drop down the image dialog, we see main JPEG. 
listed and we can select it and it shows up in the tool. And remember, at this point, we really don't have a way to add links to the custom maps within the tool. But if you simply save this file, and you can call it whatever you want for our test, we'll call it main2.htm. You then have a template that you can edit and then with some basic HTML understanding, you can customize this map to include links to the other maps we've created in this example. So now if we go back to WinSCP, we copy our HTM, our HTML files into the htdocs directory. And then at this point, our users can access this main2.htm, which of course won't help them because we haven't included links to the other maps. If you were to edit this file, you're going to see just by saving what we saved in the map tool, we end up with a lot of extra information that for this main map we really don't need. We don't need the instructions for the user to install an iPrint printer because we don't have any iPrint printer links in this map. So one thing you can do right within WinSCP, I'll go ahead and edit the file and you can remove pretty much everything except for the reference to the um, main.jpg. So I'm going to remove all of this information and I'm going to remove these instructions. We don't need that. And we do not need this. So really all we have is just a reference to the main.jpg. I can close this, choose the option to save. And now if I were to go to main2.htm, I see my main campus map. None of the extra instructions for installing iPrint printers show, and of course we haven't added links to the other maps yet. The goal is to end up with a map that actually looks like this, where we have our main campus, but we also have links to each of the uh, maps that we created that have links to the iPrint printers for our users to install. So we can go to the first floor, second floor, and so on. And what we'll do now is we'll review the code in the HTM file that allows these uh, links to display. And there's also some code that allows you to name your map if you'd like. Again, the intent of this video is not to teach you HTML, but just to give you a basic example of what can be done. There are tons of resources online. You can get as creative and as complicated as you want. So let's take a look at what this file looks like um, as far as the HTML code is concerned. Using WinSCP, I can go to the one main.htm, just double click on it. And notice the code in that file is fairly simple. We're not going to go into the details of what each of these commands mean in HTML, but you can use this as a reference for creating your own uh, maps. Again, there are so many resources on the web that will allow you to get very creative when uh, creating these custom maps. But for example, I've simply referred to the main.jpg file. Then I use these commands to actually position where the links will show up on my map. And then using these commands, I can create links within that map 
and that allows, again, the users to access the custom apps we've created. That pretty much concludes the iPrint custom app presentation. Just a couple of things to take into consideration. If you've edited the files directly from the htdocs directory, after making changes, you may want to copy those files over to your local PC. Remember that when you run the map tool, you're actually opening the files from your local PC. And then any changes you make on the local PC, obviously you'll want to then copy those files back over to the htdocs directory using, uh, again, a utility like WinSCP. Um, the other thing, if you have made or, or would like to make changes to your custom maps, you can simply use the map tool to open an existing map. For example, here's main to htm. And we can open that file. We can make any changes that we need to. Um, a more appropriate example would probably be like floor three if you wanted to add printers. Um, you could do that here. One issue to be aware of is if you happen to be in an environment where you had uh, custom maps that were created uh, prior to some of the latest iPrint updates, and you bring those maps into the new updated map tool, uh, you may run into some issues. Uh, you may run into issues trying to access those maps after applying the latest updates. Um, this particular knowledge base document, 7016923, goes into more detail as well as um, gives you the resolution for modifying your custom apps to work with the latest iPrint code. This concludes the presentation on creating custom printer maps in an iPrint environment. Hopefully you found this demonstration informative and useful. Again, this information will apply to any iPrint environment, OES, OES 11, OES 2015, the iPrint appliance 1.x through the current 3.0 iPrint appliance. Thank you for watching. Thank you.